The north of Portugal is full of surprises, but it's on the banks of the Douro River where Portugal hides one of its greatest jewels, the city of Porto. So what discoveries await you here in one of the oldest cities in Europe? exploring the city is from this most scenic and touristic quarters, Riviera. But if you Google the name Porto, the first image that'll pop up is of this place, and it's for a good reason. It's one of the most important sites in Porto because of its extraordinary urban landscapes with a history of 2,000 years and its rich and varied architecture. It's really charming, isn't it? But there's one other thing that attracts tourists here. It is the iconic Don Luis the First Bridge. But to catch the best view of the bridge itself, we highly recommend taking a boat tour to get that different perspective of it. So the interesting fact about the bridge itself is that it was built in 1886 by the student of Gustav Eiffel who built the Eiffel Tower and the Statue of Liberty. Let's look at the arc. You can definitely see the similarities between this and the Eiffel Tower. There's so many boat tours here, leaving about every 30 minutes, so you won't have any trouble getting onto one. It costs 15 euros, but they offer you the best views and the most unique views of Porto. One other thing you'll notice here is the traditional boats native to the Douro Valley. You won't find these anywhere else in the world. But enough talking about it, it's time to taste Porto. Port wine is the real pride of Portuguese people, and port wine cellars are perhaps one of the most unique things that Porto is famous for. And therefore we decided to visit one of the best wine cellars that has, hold your breath, 9 million liters of wine here. That is more than a bottle per person for every single person in Portugal. So if you come to Porto, definitely choose Cockburns. Best part, you can get to taste the wine. And now it's time to finally show you the city. And Porto is a place that you have to explore by walking. Because it's like an open museum where on every corner there is a beautiful architecture and tiles. Ceramic tiles are known as azulejos, and they're a true testament to the country's rich and artistic heritage. Some of these buildings here are covered by thousands of these azulejos. For example, the Sao Bento train station in Porto is perhaps one of the most beautiful ones in the world. The main hall features an impressive tile work that consists of 20,000 tiles telling the history of Portugal. Chapel of Souls, almost 16,000 tiles. The Church of St. Ildefonso, 11,000 tiles. But the beauty of Porto extends beyond its exterior. exciting to you but we are now in one of the most beautiful bookstores in the world the grand staircase is a true marvel with its intricate carvings and soaring ceilings as you ascend down its winding steps you can't help but feel a sense of magic and wonder and here in this magical box you can find the original little print but magical places always attract a lot of people from a huge line outside to this and as this beautiful day is coming to an end, we still want to show you a few places for unforgettable sunsets in Porto, but first we need to grab some food for our picnic there. And I think there's no better place than the local McDonald's. I think all the people just unsubscribed us. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm sure at least all of you have eaten at least McDonald's once in your life, and there's a reason why we're including this one in your must visit in Porto. It's located in a historic building from the 30s with art decor stained glass windows and chandeliers to help blow your mind. You won't need to do much research to agree with us when we say this is one of the most beautiful McDonald's in the world. It doesn't matter how beautiful it is, McDonald's is still McDonald's and I want something real Portuguese. And what can be better than pastel de nata, a typical Portuguese tart made with eggs, custard and pastry. And here you'll find that freshest pastries made right in front of you, a site that draws in both locals and tourists alike for a taste of its delicious offerings. You literally can't get it any fresher. Mm. 
Oh my goodness, I, I heard that flakiness. <laughs> <laughs> the flakiness of the shell, the buttery mouth feeling, the balanced sweetness, and the creaminess of the filling. Everything about this pastry is made mm. professionally. <laughs> so good! Mm -hmm. This is actually our first sunset spot. It's the most popular one among the locals as well as the tourists, but who can blame them? Let's take a look at this view. And if you don't mind to drive, just 15 minutes outside the city, there's another perfect spot for a sunset. Personally, I think it's our favorite. What makes this place so unique is the church that is in the ocean. We were here the other day during the storm when the waves were crashing over the church. It seemed like the church was appearing from the ocean. Today is a very calm day, but... I still think it's a perfect place to end your day in Porto. In our second day, we decided to spend outside the city at a place that plays a very important role in Porto's history. The Douro Valley, one of the world's best known wine regions and undoubtedly one of the most beautiful parts of Portugal. We've been to so many vineyards all around the world, in France, in Switzerland, in Italy. And so many times people ask us, what is your channel name? We'd love to follow. And we tell them, Dream Team Travels. And they say, oh, Drinking Travels, that is an awesome channel name. It was a joke until we realized we are moving the direction. But anyway, what to do here? First, take one of the most scenic roads in Portugal. If you don't have a car to explore the entire region, you're still not out of luck. You can take a direct train here and start your journey from one of the most beautiful train stations in Portugal. The second thing you can do here is stop in any little city and find something interesting to do. For example, here there's a church with an imposing Moroccan architectural staircase, 686 stairs. so many different museums here which will be interesting to visit if you want to know more about the history of this wine region which is in fact what we've already learned is the oldest democratic wine region the Douro Valley actually offers a huge variety of different wines there you have the port wine the traditional ones then you have the red the rosé the sparkling wine and the white wine as well to be honest we tried quite a few of these already Ooh, it's like fruity Mm -hmm. Like candy, like apple, like tea, like green tea. <laughs> <laughs> and in the end, you get free wine tasting. Best part, look at this beautiful view. Cheers. I think we're going to end our video here on the Douro River. We're going to take another cruise and look at another perspective of the beautiful vineyards. And as always, we ask people if you're from Porto or you've been to Porto and if you have any other recommendations, please leave in the comments so other travelers they won't miss anything. Because we shared our favorites, hope you love them, and see you on our next adventure. Bye! Bye.